this rack here. Right to Andy. Uh, as you can see, we've got the MR77s here. So MR77S, for example, this one, SMA connection. So if you're running a 2 and 70 handheld, you can attach it straight away to the radio, as long as it's a, you know, a Yesu, a Kemoda, an Icon. We do do barrel connectors if you do want to swap it around for a, for a reverse SMA connection. Now these come in uh, three different guises. So we did the BNC version as well. And the one that looks as if it's not in stock at the moment is the PL259 version. Good for 70 watts and comes complete with the mag mounts and uh, under a meter long. So I mean about 50 centimeters, so half a meter on that. Now we get a lot of questions with regards to antennas for handhelds, sort of upgrading the stock antennas, rubber ducks, etc. Uh, as you can see here, got a good selection of diamond ones. So we've got these lovely little uh, whippy SRH519s. A bit shaky today, as you can see. It's a bit cold in here. Okay, and they're really, really thin. Let's see if I can uh, show you. There we go. So they are very thin, very whippy, and uh, actually quite like those. Next to that, uh, telescopic whip RH789, I believe. Yep, 789. Uh, receives on 95 to 1.1 1 .1 gig, which is pretty good. So if you're running a THD 74, for example, they're pretty good for those. Uh, only thing is you will have to change because it's a BNC connection on the bottom. Next to that, we've got the uh, big bendy one. Who were the SRJF 40A? Let's see if I can get a bit closer. There you go. As you can see, that's uh, held where I've bent it to as well. So that they're quite good if you want to keep the antenna vertical when when you're talking sort of down through the radio. And uh, over in stock and he's a really good upgrade from a stock antenna SMA connection standard on there as well uh, and actually do six meters so if you've got a, a VX7 for example absolutely perfect for those so there you go on that if you're again if you're looking for a telescopic whip you find that most of the telescopic whips are BNC so this one is as well there we go, and that's the RH775, uh, just over a tenner basically for that. So they're really handy if you're running a, a scanner. There we go. Good selection of dummy loads back in now. So these are all 30 amp Mydell dummy loads, just over 25 pounds for these. As you know, you should always have one of these in the shack. And we've got some uh, larger versions as well. So we've got a, if I get down here, hear me creaking, uh, DL 250As, which are 250 watts max, basically, DC up to 600 megs, and uh, 600 megs up to one gig. And uh, PL 259s on those. And of course, the diamond variants as well, the 50 watt DL 50s. Okay. Again, we've restocked again with dog bones. Obviously, antenna season coming up now. Weather is getting slightly better. So we've got the uh, medium-sized dog bones in white, gray, and black. And then we've got the large dog bones in black as well. And the Alpha Delta CINs. Okay, now moving along, we do have these BC200Ls in stock, which are a commercial antenna. So they come with a cutting chart and you actually trim these to the uh, the resonant frequency that you want. Uh, 370 to 430 megs, uh, give or take. So these are really, really well constructed. As I said, they are for commercial purposes. 
and uh, just over 80 pounds, I believe, on those. And fairly long, so you get a little bit of gain. And X200Ns are back in. And as with all of the uh, the diamonds, collinears comes with the the mounting brackets as well, U bolts, and the radials. X thirty is available. Again, N type variation on these, and ever popular V two thousand like what we use here. So six two N seventy, just over seven feet in length for these uh, V two thousand. So once you've got them up. There's not really much difference between that and an X50 once it's up visually. Coming along, got some uh, monobanders. So two meters, uh, five eighth stacked. Ground plane. Again, pretty low profile. And the good thing is with it being a double five eighths is the gain's pretty good. It's about 6.5 dB gain on these. There we go. You can see the full length there. Next to that, D303, which is a HF and VHF receiving antenna. So ideal, if you're into your, your aviation listening, these are absolutely superb. You can get them up and you can cover the sort of transatlantic routes, etc. on HF. And we can see there we zoom in. It's kind of got a, a mid-radial setting on it. A bit of a strange setup, but they work really well. Okay, and we've got one of these left as well. These were qu quite popular a few years ago, actually. Uh, it's a diamond portable mast that they made, so beautifully constructed, as you can see there. And then they come with the, uh, the guy lines as well. 152.95 for those. Hi to Ian, good to see you there. Uh, what's the super antenna like and how does it perform? Uh, so Derek, yeah, super antenna, I'm currently using one at the moment. I believe Gary's using one at the moment. Uh, if you pop Gary's call sign, I believe, into um, the uh, PSK reporter, you'll be able to find how Gary's getting on with his super antenna. So yeah, I believe he's been running some FT8 with that. But I find it okay, yeah. I've got no, no qualms of it at all. Um, Let's reconnect now. Apologies for that. So to reconnect. Um, yeah, so with regards to the super antenna, as I said, best DX on that so far for myself is uh, into the States. And that was running a, probably about five watts, really, on SSB. Fair enough during the contest, but it, it was done. Okay, now coming along to here, we've got the Diamond Mobile antennas. So back in stock are the NR7700s. Three dB of gain on two and 5.5 dB of gain on 70 SEMs. Under 40 pounds for those. And I believe there are fold over on these as well. Uh, next to that, hiding in the dark, is the 770 RSP, ever popular 770R, which we normally do, and this is the spring version of it. So if you've if you've got a Land Rover, if you like to do a bit of off-roading, etc., then these are really good for you, as you can see. Got a spring-mounted base on that. And then next to that, we've got the HF20s. Now, I've got the full set of these. Jonathan's been using these as well um, when he doesn't want to put the ATAS out. So this is the 20 meter HF whip. Best DX on this into uh, Thailand at a 20 minute QSO from the car with an 857. And they work an absolute treat. Used to call CQ actually um, every <laughs> every night on the way back from Chertsey when we were at Chertsey on the, one of these antennas. And amazing how many stations came back to me on 20 meters. Next, that got six meter variants as well. Good thing with these antennas, which are uh, try and balance the microphone again. Bear with me a second. Yeah. So the good thing with these antennas is there's a just here is a, a collar. Oh, sorry, I'm lying to you. Look, ignore that. 
just there is the collar. So you can literally just slide the uh, the whip of the antenna up and down to adjust those WR. So you don't have to get the Allen keys out, etc. Okay, so that's that. Let's have a quick look at the uh, messages. The discount antennas as well. For all of those of you into receiving, these do transmit on 2 and 70 as well. So D190. which will give you uh, 100 megs up to 1.5 gig. And the D130 as well, which is uh, 25 megs to 1.3 gig. Again, they come with, I think it's 10 meters of cable and PL259 as a connection on that. There we go. So we've got a couple of the uh, Super Gainer Diamond Antennas SG2000s. Not the cheapest of mobile antennas, but they are made better quality than the usual diamond ones. So there you go. Quite a lengthy antenna, actually. Good for 150 watts and about 5.2 dB in gain. Okay, coming along for that, we've got the Nagoya. If you're looking for something a bit more, um, a bit more of a value sort of choice, really. Uh, we've got the uh, Mag 79 EL, again 2 and 70, bit of gain, under 40 pounds for these. So you can probably tell by the part numbers on these what the equivalent diamond version is. And then we've got for, I mean, 15 pounds, 14.95 for the 77 Zero H, which is the high power version in Nagoya. There we go. Now, if you want to get on the air and you don't want to spend too much of your mobile setup, absolutely perfect. Got a really good following in the Nagoya brand. And then we've got the Jetfon brand as well. I started selling these last year. Again, really good value. Got a nice little spring mounted, uh, the 150 here, which is a two meter spring mounted. antenna and uh, not too large again that's probably about it's got to be what 50 centimeters or so it's a half a meter so look on the website for them if you can't find any of the items in and they're not on the website give us a call uh, we'll get them added so that you can order online and get your one percent uh, credits back or of course you can always order over the phone so that's the tri-band mydel 6r 627 62 and 70. Quite handy if you're running one of the TYT 9800s or an FT 8900, for example. Perfect for that. One of my favorites, Monoband, which is the Mydel M285S. So five eighths on two meters. Nice straight whip. As you can see, it goes down to here. There's the base. And the good thing about these is they work on six as well. That's a little insider tip for you. Okay, so they're in stock. Uh, DX Commander poles are back in stock, as you can see. As you can see there, also we've got a bit of screening from the lighting that's being changed. There we go. And we've got the four meter Serio based antennas back in stock as well. Obviously, bear in mind that you do need to tune these yourself. Okay, let's have a quick look, see if there's any more uh, messages on here. Afternoon to Alan. Okay, that's looking good. All right, so I will show you uh, a little bit of the mess in here at the moment, as you can see. And we've got the new lighting going up. Some nice LED lighting for the showroom. So we are uh, <laughs> mid setting up, as they say, ready for uh, for opening on on uh, Monday the twelfth. It's a little bit dark in this corner at the moment. So uh, one more thing to show you before I do go. Let me just uh, pop this round. In fact, what I'm going to do, there we go. You can probably see what it is now because I've not switched the camera around. So we've got the Yasu M70s back in stock. 
Uh, they should be live on the website, hopefully within the next hour or so. Um, we've just booked in a, a new batch. Um, if they haven't gone live just before we shut at half four, then please give us a call and we can do it over the phone for you. Um, but we've got limited stock of these left over. So, right, bear me a sec. Let me just see if I can switch this round and we can uh, take a look. Let's drop that down a bit. Weird angle. So, this is the uh, the latest offering from Yesu when it comes to desk microphones. Now, you may remember the uh, the original MD100, which, if you bear with me, I might actually have one to show you. He says, so we can see the comparison as well of these two microphones. So, this is the original. MD100, which sort of many of you may have had. As you remember, you can go either 8 round or RJ45 in the back. Now, nothing's changed there. They've kept exactly the same design with the uh, M70, as you can see. And main difference really on this is obviously the cowling on the outside. And they've actually got a like a more of a textured feel on the PTT, and it's like a soft touch PTT, so it actually rises up in a slow fashion. Kind of like when you get a luxury car and it just kind of pops up, or those uh, nice little sort of kitchen drawers that just close themselves. Lock button as well. So if you're on 80 meters or on top band uh, discussing your latest hospital appointment, etc. Absolutely perfect for that. You can go into full details about how painful that gout was. Uh, no issues there at all. So as I said, these are beautifully, beautifully made. Uh, made in Japan as well. So for those of you that always ask. So there you go. Now, I will go through the specs of these a little bit more um, on the website. So if you take a look on there, we will put some more information down. We will do a full test, etc. Uh, try and go on there with them maybe and, and, and do a set video. So let me just pop this back up. There we go. Okay. So, oh, silly question there I just saw. Let me get that working again. Will it work with a 7100? Um, do you know what? I'd need to look into it. There may be a way of uh, of adjusting it. If it's anything like kind of the, the M100, for example, where it's a dual element microphone, there may be a way of doing it if it's dynamic and electric. So you never know. Um, we're asked the guys. If it is, it's probably something that <laughs> you may have to do yourself if you want to rewire, etc. Okay. Uh, Paul says he's got one already with his FT450. How does it perform, Paul? Be interesting to know how it performs. We've, we've yet to have a play with them, what we've getting ready for uh, for Monday's opening. Paul says they're spot on so far. So there you go. What more could you ask? Someone who was actually using it and he's, he said it's great so far. But um, we'll double check. As I said, we will do a full review. It could be, to be honest, it's something we've never really done is a, a full review when it comes to microphones. We've, we've never really done any sort of comparison tests, etc. Because obviously it's a bit awkward when you're doing it on air. Um, but yeah, I mean, we can do it. We can check out audio bandwidths, etc. Maybe get, we can get one of the engineers to take a look and uh, do a few reports for us with that. Right, those of you asking about Martin as well, he is okay now. Um, operation didn't go fully to plan um, in the fact that the wallet has still remained in his pocket and we've yet to get the wallet out from his pocket. Um, we won't tell the, uh, tell the electricians that yet. But um, as far as we know, they have, well, they, they didn't manage to take that wallet from Martin's back pocket. So we're going to have to have a little whip around, whip around to pay the electricians today. Anyway, if there's no more questions, I will leave you because there's a bit of catching up to do before we open on Monday. Um, by all means, please come down and see us. Uh, hi to Tim as well. Hi, Tim. How you doing? Um, please do come down and see us. Obviously, Masks on and the usual social distancing rules will apply. Uh, we may have to limit the number of people in the store as we as we did before when we were open. So maybe, you know, five or six people. So please, as much as we'd like you to come down in a coach, please don't. Because uh, 
a few of you will be waiting outside for a while. Um, so when Martin comes back from hospital, do we start calling him Martin? Um, no, it's still the same Martin. It's still the same Martin. And we will get, get him back on alive as well. Uh, hi to uh, to Rob watching as well. And Mark, he's looking forward to visiting in person. I'm not sure if you've been before, Mark. Do you know that? I'm terrible with names and call signs, which is really bad in this job. But uh, if you haven't and you're visiting for the first time, same with all you guys and girls that have passed um, your foundation licenses, your intermediates, etc., full licenses over the last year uh, during lockdown, please come down. You know, you can open the magazines up, you can look online. Nothing beats coming to actually see the radios themselves because, you know, like the 450, a lot of people say, oh, come and see it. Oh, it's a lot smaller than I expected. You know, probably something we've all heard over time. But, um, you know, it's worth worth coming down. DX10's on display. We've got every model available. They're all on display. You know, fair enough, you, ca you can't get you to transmit on them whilst they're in the store because of the, the workshops being upstairs. However, you can come, you can. And uh, we will have an open day as well. But we've just got to wait for the nod. Um, good thing is it's given him enough time to save up to make it a super special open day that's for sure uh, thanks again for your support over the Easter weekend had a really good time uh, kept all the guys busy uh, I know Jonathan said Saturday was pretty crazy I think he was uh, silently happy the shop wasn't open so he had enough time to do everything but um, podcast again will be back on again uh <laughs> Alan says it's dangerous visiting because it will cost money. That is true. That is true. And just make sure you do bring your wallet when you come down. Um, got another message there. Any thoughts on the discontinued Kenworth TS 590SG? Um, we haven't heard that it is actually discontinued. It may say it on the website. It may be an error. Um, it doesn't say it on our website. We do have stock of TS590 SGs, which arrived, I believe, about two days ago. Uh, so if you do want one, I'd say jump on it quickly. Um, but we've not heard anything from Kenwood. Uh, Martin has emailed them direct. So uh, we've emailed Japan to find out what's happening. But no, we're just waiting and see. Uh, hopefully it is uh, just an error, because I do like the 590 SG. HF, six meters, simple to use. I, I use the same line every time I come on here about a 590 SG that if you like a traditional radio without all the scopes and you just want to get on and actually listen to what's on the bands then 590 SG is the way to go so as I said we've got stock we've not been told it's been discontinued we've still got orders in place um, as you know we get regular orders from Kenwood on a you know two every two or three months so wait and see let's wait and see hopefully it's just an error uh, 890s are still available, 990s we've still got on order and they're still available. Uh, TS480s I believe may have slowed down, I'm not sure if they're doing another production run of them. Uh, HD74s, if you need one I might have a couple hidden somewhere. Um, other than that they've now come to end of line, uh, just down to the parts really. Um, I'm fingers crossed that with Kenwood they're, they're very traditional in the in the Japanese way that they operate so what we'll probably find is that um, we might just get a surprise one day it happened with the 990 it happened with the 890 uh, literally we got a call saying we've got a brand new radio here you go let's roll with it so we're we're fingers crossed but um, normally around that sort of time you get some murmurings from uh, from the far east and yeah, hopefully, you know, fingers crossed, it's about time they did bring something out. Martin's been mentioning it, that there, there may be something in the pipeline. He's the man to know. So, um, yeah, we'll wait and see, and hopefully we'll have an update for you next week. Uh, and is, if it has come to an end, then I'd say buy one now, even if you have it as a backup radio, it's worth doing. It really is. Um, all right, let's have a quick look again. That's Alan Yep said, thanks for the updates. No, no problem. Listen, as soon as we know anything, obviously we'll let you know via either the uh, the something for the weekend or via the mail outs, etc. But we're we're the same as you, you know. <laughs> yes, we did. Do we do distribute to Kenwood? But as I said, they're fairly secretive um, in Japan when it comes to either new products or end of line products, etc. 
but as soon as we know we will let you know and and we're just trying to keep as much stock as we can and then you know how we normally do it we, we buy as much as we can so that it's available for you uh any 450d still available uh i don't know let me um let me ask john bear me a second john are there any new 450ds left are you sure are you just he's he's checking now the funny thing is if i turn it round. Is he's actually sitting in the dark in there. So there is there. I can't. You know you're sitting. In, you know you're sitting in the dark, and I can't actually see you. So okay. he's checking. He's checking. There are some. Le okay, so there's. I've been told there's a couple available, um, brand new. So they come with a three years warranty. So if you do want a 450D. Yeah, get on it quick. Let me just check the used as well. Bear me a second. There's not much used compared to what Jonathan showed you. Um, most of it is upstairs at the moment. Um, going through quarantine. Once it's all been checked and cleaned, etc., uh, we will have it down. So hopefully for the opening, we could have a, a load of um, used gear. Um, let me have a look. Give me a second. Cause I'm, I'm just wondering about that 450 because I'm sure I saw it. No, been sold already. No, nope, it's gone, but I do have a 590SG. I don't need it here, I'll be honest with you, John. Okay, well, I'm sure they believe us. I'm sure they do, but look. There we go. There we go. So there's definitely one. There's definitely. <laughs> don't bring the other one out, John. It looks much the same. You'll be all right. So there's definitely one of those. Um, so again, be quick. Uh, I don't know if any of the other dealers have got any. I don't think they do. Um, so yeah, <laughs> hundreds are back in stock again. Ninety-seven hundreds. Uh, I've just got to load those through. Seven hundred five's got a new batch of seven hundred fives have arrived. Basically, we had an Icom delivery, a Yesu delivery. Zero uh, loops are back in stock as well. They turned up. All all of these turned up on the same day. So you can imagine how Paul felt in dispatch. Um, so yeah, Ciro Baby Loops are back in. Midi Loops are back in, in their new uh, elongated packaging boxes. Um, we've got the CIV parts for those as well. They've come in. Um, also, what else did I see this week turn up? Uh, as I said, yeah, Kenwood turned up. So 590s are definitely there. Um, THK 20s, nice little handhelds, uh, two meter handhelds, I believe. I've got a few of those back in stock. I've uh, still got some 890s left over, believe it or not. Uh, Yesu turned up as well this week. So we've got uh, FTDX 101s, uh, Ds and MPs uh, available from stock. Also, we've got uh, FT4s have turned up again. FT65s, still got some VX6s which have just arrived. I think they're coming to end of line now as well. So really, really great uh, handheld, especially if you're into Rainet, etc. Really robust. Uh, FTM 400s, FTM 300s have come in. I've got the AC repeaters have come back in as well. The R2s, uh, I believe I'm down to the last one of those. So if you do need one, be quick. Uh, and again, if, if you belong to a repeater group or you're a repeater keeper and you buy a DR2 from us, let me know because whilst I've got a uh, good stock of, D, of um, the FTM 300s, for example, I can do really good prices. If you don't want the Bluetooth headset, you know, just give me a call and we can go from there. Um, there's been some murmurings with regards to pricing on 991s and FTDX 10s. Speaking of FTDX 10s, I've got some of those left over as well. I've just got a batch of those in. But yeah, there's been some murmurings about uh, some of the dealer prices being slightly lower than ours. What I will say is, especially as of Monday, yes, you may pay £50 more. However, when that breaks down, you can come to our door. OK, there's no emailing. There's no trying to phone call. You know exactly where we are. You can bring it back in. We're Yesu approved, direct to Japan. The only workshop, you know, within store that is authorized by Yesu in the UK. So you're more than welcome to come straight to us. Say, look, this isn't working. We'll get it sorted for you. And it's a standard three year warranty as well. So, you know, that's the difference. It's kind of that you get what you pay for in the fact that if anything does go wrong, you know where we are and you can call. And there's, there's plenty of us here. So it's not a one and you, you've spent your money and your radio goes down. Uh, good luck trying to, uh, to get it sorted. But you know where we are. So 
don't worry about the pricing. You'll, we'll make it back to you in another way, whether it be for accessories or uh, having an open day and feeding you. So no problem there. Anyway, I'm going to leave it there and finish off the emails and uh, be out of here in an hour. So uh, enjoy your weekend. I know I will. And uh, one last look at the questions. Nope. You've all gone fairly quiet now, so that's great. Have a good weekend and uh, we'll see you in store as of Monday. See you later.